We're back again. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be reacting to two videos about designer clothes. I always sit and think to myself, like, why are some people so obsessed with designer brands? Like, why are some people so obsessed with wearing Gucci, Balmain, Balenciaga? Now, don't get it twisted. It's okay to wear like a Prada hair, like a Fendi hair, like a LV hair. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah, but when people are obsessed with, like, every item of clothing in their wardrobe has to be a designer brand and that. But you're lost in the matrix, blood. You will never be free. Literally, there are some people right now going broke, running up credit card debt, going into their overdrive just for the latest Balenciaga jacket. It's nonsense, blood. So, I watched a couple of videos and that about the psychology of wearing designer brands and that. And I came across one, it's like a 10 minute video. I started watching it for a minute and a half. And I thought, you know, this would be a good video to react to. So I didn't even watch it no further than that. And then there was the next video that came up. And I thought, all right, cool. This one should be good. I just watched it for like 30 seconds and that. Uh, this video should be good to react to. So I'm going to be reacting to both of them. Uh, yeah, let's see how it goes, isn't it? Brutally honest luxury brand tier list. The fashion world can be a little complicated to navigate by those who don't know much about brands and their history. And today, we're here to solve that problem. The fact that a brand is considered luxury doesn't mean that it stands in the same tier as other luxury brands. In fact, inside the world of luxury, there are many brands that stand out due to their exclusivity, and others that do not due to their mass market appeal. Let's begin this video by talking about the lowest tier of luxury brands. No <laughs> what they have tiers, yeah, okay. Note that we'll be talking about five main tiers of luxury, but some of these tiers can also be subdivided into sub-tiers. Don't worry, we'll explain everything in an easy way, so stay until the end if you want to find out which luxury brand is considered the sole king of luxury of the fashion world. Like they're saying people right now, yeah, they're so obsessed with brands and that. It's like, wearing Zara clothes is not good enough, you know. Like, to me, Zara's a decent brand of clothes. Don't get, get it twisted. Zara is not designer clothes. But there's certain people, Zara is like, oh, 10 years ago, that's the last decade and that. Nah, everything gotta be Fendi, everything gotta be D squared and that. It's like, why, fam? There's certain people that look down on, like, bro, listen, swag is about not the brand, it's about how it fits, how you wear, how you rock it. And that. There's certain people, they don't consider other people to have swag unless they're wearing the latest drip, bro. Just don't get it, fam. Welcome to Nine Figure Life. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment the hidden message. So let's begin with our countdown. Tier 5, Mass Market. When we think mass market, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, stuff like the one you find on Zara or H&M. Cheaply made items that don't cost much to the customer. However, even in the fashion world, there are mass market luxury brands because of their affordability, which is precisely why they sit at this tier. Because luxury brands are known to be exclusive. If they are affordable by the common public, then they lose precisely that same exclusivity that makes them pricey. These brands are seen as luxury brands in developing countries, but they are rather seen as contemporary brands in developed countries. Some examples of these brands are Coach, Tory Burch, Kate Spade, Michael Kors, and Longchamp. Michael Kors and Coach have particularly struggled as their aggressive moves into the affordable luxury market weakened their brand appeal among higher-end consumers. Michael Kors, Kate Spade, and Tory Burch are probably best categorized as... That's how you know Michael Kors is a, uh, what do they call it, a mass market brand or what do they call it? Like, anyway, like an affordable brand because I was even thinking to get my girl a Michael Kors bag for Christmas. Don't snitch, man. Don't snitch, man. Get me? Obviously, Christmas has passed now and it is January 2023, but I was thinking about getting my girl like a Michael Kors bag and I didn't end up doing it. Um, yeah, that's how you know it's affordable. The fact that I considered buying her that bag. I remember my girl was talking about YSL bags are nice and that. Blood, when I check them YSL bags, is it Eve Saint Laurent or something nonsense like that? YSL, blood, them bags there is three grand. The fuck you walking around with a three grand bag for? Like, what's the need, blood? I, I know what the need is, a fashion statement, like, ah, oh, you know, you get me, but like, come on, man. Foolishness, blood. Three thousand pounds on a fucking bag. Don't get me started on was it them Birkin and them Birkin bag nonsense and that thirty grand. Casual luxury. 
which is a term for clothing that has some sort of prestige, but is more accessible to the public than the other brands that we'll be looking at in our tier list. Michael Kors himself has even stated this to be his target market. These brands don't aspire to the level of luxury of the higher brands because they're more interested in diversifying their brand into a lower price point and wider availability further away from the luxury market. And it's important to note that despite this, that's not a bad thing, as Michael Kors is a fantastic example of a mass market luxury brand that has been successful in the business world. The fourth tier on our list is occupied by the semi-expensive brands that some may consider trashy. You've probably seen these brands charge ludicrous prices for their clothing thanks to influencers and people that have hyped their products to the point they are, ironically, not seen as luxury anymore. If they have to rely so much on trashy marketing campaigns, unlike other more well-coordinated and established brands, then they might not be seen as such. For example, we have Philippine, Palm Angels, Emporio Armani, and Off-White. Thanks to collaborations with celebrities and big advertising, these brands are seen as luxury. However, when compared to other traditional luxury brands, these are no better than the mass market brands. Yeah. However, as our tier five clothing, these ones appeal to a special demographic instead of attempting to be as luxurious as the higher tiers. Let's take a look at Off-White to provide more background. Off-White makes plenty of clothes that are what you might recognize as high fashion, but it's better known for things like $1,000 sweatshirts, pricey tongue-in-cheek phone cases, buzzy collaborations that help fuel the $1 billion sneak. Do you know what, talking about fashion, yeah, it's, it's funny how like certain brands come in and certain brands go out and that. And literally my girl was asking me the other day, like when I, when you was growing up, Jay, like what was the in thing? Like when you was, you get me young, not that I'm old now, obviously man's only 30 years old. You get me anyway. anyway. And I was saying like when I was younger, let's say, so I was born 1992. Let's say like when man was like 15 or whatever. So we're going on like what 2007 let's say like between 2000 and 2008 like the in thing was let's say like lock 29 tracksuits iceberg history tracksuits um avrex yeah them them avrex jackets there was expensive i never had one um stone island that was expensive um, I never owned no Stony as well. Stone Island, that was expensive. And that, like back in the day, like obviously Gucci and all of them brands, they probably existed more than likely. I know they did, but they just weren't the in thing. Like everything has this little like way. I'm going two years soon, yeah. Like in, in a few years' time, get me. People ain't going to be talking about Balenciaga and things. I remember, like, obviously these brands are not as uh, luxury and now but even like i remember when ed hardy is it christian or audorjan or audorjan or whatever his name is i don't know if that's the same as ed hardy but i remember them ed hardy t-shirt like everyone a lot of them horns are used as wearing ed hardy and that like so yeah certain brands just come in and come out and but i remember when i was a youth man yeah them lot 29 tracks that was desirable it weren't luxury designer brands and that but that was like the in thing to have in it like that was like yeah Get me, you're one of the guys if you got one of them tracksuits and them things that you got Avrex, you got a Stone Island and that. Okay, um, talking about trainers, obviously, like some people can, some, some people consider, oh, like wear Nike and Adidas to be designer or something. No, don't get too, I'm not into no designer brands or nothing like that, but there's no way I'm wearing New Balance or some shitty brands and that. Blood. If I don't know the brand, I ain't even gonna bother put my foot in that. You understand? Like, man, just wear like Adidas trainers that cost eighty pound in it. Don't get it twisted, man. I've never bought a pair of trainers for myself that cost more than probably one hundred and twenty. I think one hundred and twenty is the max. Yeah, I'm not one of these people that will spend two hundred pound on a pair of Nikes and that. But some people could consider like, oh, Nike trainers not to be designer, i.e., like. Balenciaga and that or Prada but it is some sort of bottom of the range like branded clothes like foot uh, trainers and that I don't really consider I, I just feel like Nike and them things there is is bog standard and that because I know what I'm buying with Nike I can't really trust these next Asics and New Balance and what was it Skechers and them things I ain't wearing it that's a nerd's blood so yeah everything has its time in it I'm going to you soon 
Balenciaga and things that people may even be chatting about that. The resale industry. Its signature, seemingly non-functional industrial themed belts, and even trying out the home products markets. Thanks to the hype by celebrities, Off-White can charge huge prices for their clothing, despite not being as old and recognized as the brands will be looking at in the higher tiers. Let's move on. Tier 3 is composed of two levels. We'll begin with what we'll call Level 3B. 3B is known as expensive, though these fashion houses are not as huge compared to the brands in Level 3A. These include Alexander McQueen, D Squared 2, Bali, oh, Max Mara. I remember Machino. And my mom had one of them bills there. My mom's kind of into them. My mom liked to look at brands there back in the day. Like my mom had Machino and them things there. These are old school. Like this is some nighty shit you get. Like, okay. D Squared. I'm sure I mentioned. Yeah, D Squared. Okay. I don't know the rest of them. Moschino, Mew Mew, Balm. Moschino, I thought it was Machino, you know. Mon and Mulberry. Some people that are into fashion might be able to recognize Alexander McQueen's signature high platform sneakers or any random $600 t shirt created by D Square 2. Bob, I'm not wearing no fucking 600 pound t shirt with these fucking armpits. You want me to ruin my Ralph's Clark t shirts and that? You mad? I buy cheap t shirts that don't mean. Nothing, I just dashed them away and then things there. There's no way I'm wearing some fucking expensive t shirt for my armpits to ruin them. The blood club. But these brands don't have the same pull nor the resources possessed by their more expensive and exclusive counterparts. Level 3A is where things start getting real. These brands are expensive, highly respectable fashion houses but remain only in the middle of our list because some of their goods are too mainstream or are manufactured in Chinese sweatshops. The difference between these brands and Level 3B lies in that these brands are mostly at least a century old and have many different products that appeal to entry-level customers as they do with customers who are seeking the most expensive products ever made. We're talking about Gucci, Prada, Versace, Burberry, Givenchy, Balenciaga, Valentino, Dolce & Gabbana, and Giorgio Armani. Do you know what? I would have never have put Burberry in the same category as uh, Balenciaga and Givenchy, you know. I would have put Burberry in the next category. And same like, yeah, I would have put Giorgio Armani. There's me thinking that Emporio Armani and... Gio oh, it's the same thing. Okay. I would have put Giorgio Armani, DNG, and Burberry. I would have put that in category. And then I would have put Balmain in category A. That's what I was going to say as well. So them brands there that like I mentioned, especially like Avrex and Stone Island and that, that they, those were like the hood designer brands. Like I couldn't imagine white people wearing, especially at that era as well. I couldn't imagine white people wearing Stone Island or Avrex and that. That's more like for hood niggas, isn't it? Um, I can imagine white people wearing Prada, obviously, uh, Balenciaga and Gucci at that time. We're talking about 2000 to the year, so the year 2000 to the year 2008, 2009, and that. call it 2010. At the time, I can imagine white people to be wearing Gucci and Versace and all them things there. Now, to be fair, Versace, like a black man name was wearing that, but definitely Stone Island and them things there, Averix and that, that was strictly blacked off. And the only people them that would have been wearing Gucci and Balenciaga and Balmain would have been white people. These brands are much more recognizable than Level 3B, which is another reason why they are in a higher level. Next up, we have Tier 2. This is the ultra expensive tier that still has a few entry level goods that some people can afford with certain effort. Up here, we have Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Lowe, and Louboutin. On top of that, tier two prices have no relation to production costs. The prices are based on how much consumers will pay to be seen with what they perceive as a high value, prestigious item. Nobody buys Fendi stuff to carry their stuff around. They buy Fendi to show off how rich and tasteful they are. So in essence, this is where luxurious items start becoming an investment of sorts. You might be able to buy a Louis Vuitton handbag and keep it for 10 years. And if it's in good state, you could resell it for a good profit. 
since Louis Vuitton never does sales, you have a higher chance than, say, selling Gucci items. Tier 1 is the ultra expensive, very exclusive, and very prestigious. I'm actually interested to see what is in the ultra expensive, exclusive, and prestigious because it, it, it must be Gucci because Gucci ain't, ain't there at the moment. So it must be Gucci. I'm trying to think what else would be there. But it's like, why do you... You must have some sort of insecurity about you where to the point where you need to walk down the street and show everyone that you got money and that. Like, why do you care about other people's opinion? Like, literally, the reason why certain people, I said this many times, I'm going to say it again, the reason why certain people drive a Mercedes is either to impress those around them or suppress those around them. So to impress those around them, like, oh, yeah, look at me, I'm driving a Mercedes, I fit in with the crew and that. Like, I'm one of the guys, yeah. Or people want to drive a Mercedes to suppress those around them. Yeah, everyone in my family, all my friends drive Ford Focuses and Skodas and Fiat's and that. So I'm going to get a Mercedes to outdo them. And it's the same thing with the designer brands and that. More so to suppress those around them. I would even say people wear Louis Vuitton, uh, Fendi and Gucci and, uh, and Balenciaga to fit in. It's more to suppress those around it. it's more to show people i got more money than you because for the most part you're not really going to walk past too much people in the street that are wearing lv fendi or all these brands and that for the most part you're going to walk past people who are not wearing that stuff so you're not going to walk past anyone where you can say yeah you're going to get me like us two is you get me on the same level and that for the most part you're going to be walking past people and you're going to feel like yeah i'm better than them it's a madness. I don't understand why people are going into debt over this stupidness. It is the ultimate form, ultimate level of consumerism. You will never be free until you don't care about this foolishness and that. I've never been into this stuff. Just don't get it, fam. And like tier three, we've decided to divide it into two main levels. Wow. Tier 1B has extremely expensive items but has been getting mainstream and thus less prestigious. Gucci. Due to marketing working against them, Gucci. even someone who just got rich and doesn't know anything about fashion can afford some of their items. Oh. At this level, we have Chanel, the second most valuable fashion house in the world. Really? Bottega Veneta, Tom Ford, and Dior. The difference between these items is that they are usually less trashy and cater to a different target than the previous tiers and even their entry-level items are extremely expensive. Tier 1A is composed of only the most prestigious of all brands. These are Keaton, Loro Piana, Deville, Moina, Brioni, Goyard, Berludi, and Armani Priva. For example, Brioni was rated the most prestigious luxury... I have never heard of any of those brands in that section A. Obviously, B, Chanel, I'm sorry, I'm in section B, Chanel, Dior, Tom Ford. I've even got a Tom Ford out there. The, guys, listen, I've got a little, yeah, I've got a little, and I didn't even buy it though. I've got a little Prada wallet that I never bought that. I ain't got no designer fashion accessories that I've actually bought. Like, there's people out here, and it's just so dumb. Like, their mentality is so stupid. There's people out here that will brag and like, yeah, I've got a wardrobe that's worth £20,000. Dickhead! You could have bought a fucking property with that money, blood. £20,000, blood. You could have put down on a bigger property than this at the time that I bought this. So I bought this house here for £136,000. I had to put down a 10% deposit of £13,600. You could have put down a 10% deposit on a property that's worth 200 grand at that time. Yeah, with that kind of uh, cost of your wardrobe. It's just stupid. A man will brag, you know, oh, my wardrobe's worth 20 grand and that. But I don't give a fuck. Furthermore, any man that talk like that, but you, you're slightly like a gyal. Only gyal, only gyal care about how much their wardrobe is worth. Like, you're a fucking man, blood. Like, why you got so much clothes and them things there? Like, why do you care about fashion so much? Some bitch, like, any man that talks about, oh, yeah, uh, you know, my wardrobe cost this much and that. I guarantee you, they're probably raised in a single mom household and they had a couple older sisters and that. I'm telling you, fam, that's feminine energy. And Armani Priva. 
For example, Brioni was rated the most prestigious luxury men's fashion brand by a narrow margin in the 2007 Luxury Brand Status Index Survey from the independent New York-based luxury institutes. Goyard is another example of exclusivity. While competing brands like Gucci and Louis Vuitton are focused on opening dozens of impressive flagship stores around the world and expanding their footprint via collaborations, celebrity endorsements, and blockbuster fashion shows, Goyard is solely focused artisanal craftsmanship in one product category. They don't want to make extreme sales, they want to remain exclusive. That's why Goyard doesn't sell online, and you need to consult with them yourself if you want one of their luxury goods. Wow. Finally, the most exclusive and expensive luxury brand in the world is Hermes, on top of being one of the oldest ones in existence. Their Birkin bags are commonly seen only in the arms of high-profile celebrities, mega divas, and even princesses. Hermes has always said that one of the reasons why these bags are so pricey is that they're handmade. It takes high-brow craftsmanship and attention to detail to make them. In a sense, you can say that the process of manufacturing these bags is an art. There are no other makers of Hermes bags in the world. Birkin and Kelly bags are specially made purses designed with high quality materials, including cow, lizard, and luxurious ostrich, as well as various types of crocodile skin. They are dyed a wide array of colors and feature palladium or gold hardware that accents the bag perfectly. You can't just walk in on an Hermes shop and ask for a Birkin bag. Well, you could, but most managers will take it as a joke. Only if you have contacts within Hermes will you be able to purchase one of these, what? as they are reserved only for the most exclusive clients. What the fuck? I heard about, I've heard about that still. I think it was even my girl that was saying, yeah, you can't just buy Hermes bags. You need to know some, some, some. Yeah, I remember. I heard that somewhere. That is foolishness, blood. So it's not even about your money you know like they only want certain people to have it that is nuts bro. so what do you think of these brands so far let us it's know in the comments fool's we... game blood. it's a mugs game blood you're the top level the top echelon of fucking consumers there's certain people that how can you believe you're now up a peg just because you're wearing certain branded clothes but you're you're fool. love to know what's your opinion on our rankings don't get just like I said, it's okay to, oh yeah, let me just get a little Prada here and then, yeah, why, why not buy something that looks good and that and shows that you got a little bit of money, that's cool, but not every day, fam, not, not, not breaking the bank, that's what I'm saying, yeah, I've said this in previous videos before, when you're buying designer and luxury brands, every now and then buy one little item here and there if it makes you feel good, if you need a self-esteem boost, motherfucker, but when you're buying all, like people that have got a lot of designer stuff in there, you have too much stuff if it ain't throwaway money to you. So what I mean by this is, let's say for example, yeah, I earn like five, six grand a month from working, yeah. For me, it's nothing for me to go and buy an 80 pound jacket from Zara. So if you're buying a four or five hundred pound jacket, then you need to be earning big boy money if you get what i'm saying your clothes that you wear should be a portion a fraction of your wages the jackets that i wear that's less than half a day's money for me so when you're buying balenciaga or gucci jackets or whatever that should be less than a day's wages for you if you're wearing gucci jackets every get every jacket you got in your wardrobe is gucci and all these fendi and all this nonsense d squared and that if that's more than a day's wages something's wrong there something's not right there if you're driving a car and you know you let's say for example you're leasing a car and you're spending half your wages on that car blood that car's too expensive for you your car should be maximum 20 percent of your wages maximum i wouldn't do it personally but let's say you spend let's say you earn five grand then yeah, a thousand pounds on a car, maybe, maybe for me, I, that that's foolishness, isn't it? I'd even cut that down to say 10%, really and truly. If you're taking on, yeah, 10%, that's, that's fair. You're, take, you're taking on two grand. If you're leasing a car, it should cost you no more than 200 pounds to lease that car. Because think about it, you've got insurance on top of that as well, you know. If you're leasing a car, 
that car, if you're on two grand a month, you should not be spending four hundred pounds on a rascal car. Me and my girl was looking at it. There's one website called Contract Car. They do leasing and that. There's people like some of the contracts are forty eight months, five hundred pound for forty eight months. You'll be spending twenty four grand in four years. You know, blood. That's a deposit for a property. Man. This don't make no sense, fam. Thank you for staying with us. Don't forget to leave us a like, share this video with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel to receive more engaging business content like today's video. Hey, if you enjoyed our video, you just have to watch this one. What one? Anyway, there's enough the next video. From 500 pound Balenciaga low. Next video, next video, next video. From 500 pound Balenciaga logo t-shirts to 800 pound Christian Dior sneakers, a question that's often asked is why luxury designer brands charge so much for their products. Some will argue it's about the quality, you get what you pay for. Today, I decided to take a closer look at the different factors behind the high. That, that is bullshit, oh, the quality that you pay for. Listen, if you're spending 60, 70 pound or even 100 pound on a wallet, that's good enough. You do not need to be spending 600 pound on a fucking wallet. What are you doing with that wallet? Are you close, holding it close to your heart just in case you get shot? Like, are you using it for fucking, like, to stop bombs from blowing? I don't get it. Like, what the fuck, fam? Like, why are you spending 600 pound on a fucking wallet? Man will buy a jacket that costs 200, uh, two... I will buy a jacket that costs two grand. Blood, I better have a fucking jetpack attached to it if I'm spending two grand on a fucking jacket, blood. Why are you spending so much money? Let me see how much that that wallet was. Because I'm blocking it. All right. All right. So that wallet's 300. That's too much, man. That's, that, that, that's too much, man. 100 pound for wallet's good see, enough. You get what you pay for. Today, I decided to take a closer look at the different factors behind the high and still rising luxury fashion prices. Luxury brand prices have always been high, but over time, prices have risen at rates which far exceed general inflation levels. A logical starting point and one of multiple influences on high prices are the growing costs involved. Luxury designers tend to work with higher quality materials than your average brand would, and this has an impact on how they'll price a certain product. Oh, don't tell me on about top no of that, more. rising raw material costs due to some high quality. I don't give a fuck if it's made out of snake skin, alligator skin. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a damn yeah, if they put rock salt from Mars in, in this material. I don't give a damn, blood. It's not worth the fucking money. It's foolishness, blood. Supply shortages or increases in demand ultimately affect the final prices faced by consumers. Many high-end brands like Hermes or Louis Vuitton also have the bulk of their products manufactured in European countries, meaning the overall labour and manufacturing costs are going to be greater than if the same process were to take place in Asia, for example, a continent in which many other brands take advantage of some of the cheapest production costs in the world. While material and factory costs contribute to higher prices, the prices luxury brands charge for their items far exceed the direct costs involved in making them. Excuse me? Excuse me? Hold on one second, blood. While material and factory costs contribute to higher prices, the prices luxury brand... What the fuck is a money clip? Oh no, please, please, please do not tell me that is what I think it is. Is that what people use to clip their money? You know, like, you know, like you see their man there, they got a few hundred dollar bills and then they, really? Nah, nah, I don't believe it. You're going to spend 200 pound, bro. <laughs> you think, yeah, I'm going to have a, a grand and then, oh, you know, I'm going to take 200 pound to clip this now 800 pounds together don't make no fuckers this charge for their items far exceed the direct costs involved That's in making too much too much for a wallet i'm not spending 495 pound on a fucking wallet in a 2009 interview with the new yorker lonvon creative director at the time albert albaz added context to this notion when he described how prices aren't solely based on the end product but also the research and development that goes into making them using a dress as an example he said the following I took all the bones out and I stitched. And to get there, you know, it took me forever. It took me six or seven dresses to make one. It's time and it's money and we are not doing it in offshore countries. We pay 65% taxes in France. It's so much work. Doing a collection for me is almost like creating a vaccine. Once you create the one vaccine, then you can duplicate for $9.99. But see if you can create it for $9.99. The answer is no. 
he makes a fair point. If we fam, I don't give a fuck, blood. <laughs> That's your problem. Don't anyway. look at high street fashion brands like Zara or Topshop. They take trends that are currently hot and copy the look to stock their shelves before moving on to the next trend. In contrast to the luxury fashion example, this requires minimal research and effort. Okay. Okay. Which therefore helps to keep the cost of producing new ranges low. This argument works in favour of the... So basically Zara is like fake designer brand stuff then basically. It's coming like, like a beta... Yeah, basically Zara is like beta designer brands, basically. Luxury brands when we're talking about a complex product such as the hand-constructed dress that Albert was referring to. However, what about the simple Givenchy or Gucci logo t-shirts that retail for over £300? Has that much research and development really gone into the product to warrant such a price tag? Trust me, it's a fucking t-shirt, blood. That you're gonna sweat in, blood. Probably not. But articles released by the business of fashion and fashion beans both highlight the fact that the costs we've discussed so far are only a fraction of the total expenses required to bring products to the market. Staffing, rent, shipping, and possibly the most important one, marketing, all add massively to luxury brands' overall costs. A runway show can cost more than 15,000 per minute to stage, with some costing considerably more. Millions are spent on big celebrity endorsement deals, ads can cost hundreds of thousands to shoot, and then even more to advertise them in the right places, just so customers are convinced that they should spend as much on the latest sneakers as they would on the holiday. The now that the cost-related factors are out of the way, let's keep it real. Luxury brands will also place seemingly absurd prices on products simply to keep the prestige levels higher. Back in 2013, Burberry even announced that they would raise the prices to increase its appeal to the upper end of its consumer base in addition to attracting new, wealthier customers. The more expensive something is, the more exclusive and therefore desirable it becomes, explains Business of Fashion's Lauren Sherman. The fact that the majority of the world can't afford a particular product can make the idea of owning it a bit more attractive to certain consumers. This correlation between price and exclusivity also means that high-end brands are reluctant to offer discounts or lowly priced items amid fears that will dilute the exclusivity and power of the brand. Some brands go as far as burning stock to prevent their excess goods from being sold at knockdown prices. In 2018, Burberry hit headlines for destroying £28.6 million worth of unwanted stock in the previous year. Luxury brands are well aware that without price being kept at a certain level, their products lose an element of exclusivity that would be difficult to replace. A final factor to mention which also plays a part is the human psyche. People have historically equated cost to quality. A 2008 study from Caltech found people who drank the same wine ranked it as more enjoyable when they were told it cost more, even though what was actually in the glass was identical. This could arguably be applied to fashion too. This isn't to say that luxury brand products You are a fucking fool and you are easily programmable. It's like a sheep mentality, like how the fuck here can a drink that you've been told is more expensive taste nicer to you? That's how you know you're easily influenced. Just like with all this business, like, oh, you gotta wear a mask, you gotta wear a mask and that. You know how much people were turning into fucking the mask police and that? And it's funny, it's like, there were people getting into fights over not wearing masks in shops. And then, what, a year, half a year later, the government said you don't need to wear no mask. It's like, bruv, you were getting into fights, you are getting yourself into trouble over something that the government just snapped their fingers and said, oh, one day, don't worry about it. Okay, your same government that are hosting, so your same government that's saying, oh yeah, everyone locked down and no more than groups of two or three people in a yard, you can't go and bang your girl, you got to stay far away and that. These are the same people, same government that's in charge, hosting secret parties. Man. These are the people you're listening to, kiss my ass, man. They're the same quality as products from more. You're a follower, blood. And you're a fool. Brands, but the price and difference between the two is likely to be far more substantial than the difference in quality. Generally speaking, you're paying extra for all the cost factors we spoke about today, in addition to the premiums that are set by the brand because they know people are willing to pay more for the exclusivity and prestige associated with them. A LinkedIn article by Chris Reeston summarizes the topic nicely. This isn't word for word, but essentially he said, whether you regard these brands as being overpriced or worth buying is completely your choice. Fashion has long been regarded as an art and similarly to in the art world, items are valued by what people are willing to pay for them. If you're willing to pay top dollar for an item and you enjoy wearing it, then no one can tell you it wasn't worth it. In any case, it never hurts to know precisely what you're paying for.
Yeah, man. If you if you really think that wearing designer brands and that is important, you will forever be lost, and you are the number one consumer. And it's funny. It's like black people they want reparations and then things. They're like, oh yeah, give us back the money that you get me. They stolen. You get me. We want a couple hundred thousand pounds reparations and that because for what the white man did to us. But you're just gonna go and spend it, and it's gonna. Go, so the money that you get from reparations is gonna go straight back to the white man. Because I don't see no black people that own Fendi, Gucci, Balenciaga, Balmain, Prada, Burberry. None of them. None of them. None, none of them owners there is black. So the money that you're gonna get is going straight back to the white man. Even if it ain't on clothes, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Ferrari, Porsche, all white man own that. So what's the point? Because if black people get reparations and that, it's not going towards anything positive. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be, they're not going to be investing it. They're just going to spend it like damn jackasses. Anyway, man, that's it for today, man. I just wanted to dive into like the psychology of this uh, buying brands and that. So it was interesting to see the hierarchy of what brands are considered to be more luxurious than others. In it. Me personally, I do like a bit of Prada and that. Not that I really own it, not that I own any, but if I was going to buy um, a wear designer brands and that, probably be a bit of Prada. I don't know, Tommy Hilfiger, I don't even know if that's a luxury brand, maybe they're called Burberry here and there, you know what I'm saying, there? but me, I just don't care about stuff like that, man, it's not interested, stay wise, don't know.